Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorst, coming to you from our onboard annual retreat here at sea with close to 350 retreatants at the moment just off the coast of Mexico. About that FBI report that got leaked showing the FBI targeting Catholics and the Bureau's weird yet revealing response to it. It was leaked from the Richmond field office and posted on the site Uncovered D.C., by former special agent and whistleblower Kyle Serafin, himself a Catholic. In addition to a list of various groups, Church Militant was singled out on page four of the eight-page dossier as aligning with, quote, anti-Semitic, anti-immigrant, anti-LGBT, and white supremacy ideology, which in the FBI's incorrect estimation also overlaps with an embrace of the traditional Latin mass. You talk about horrible research. But there's more here to see than meets the eye. Most importantly, this is part of a much larger tapestry that if you are conservative in your politics and religion, not an uncommon mixture at all, you are immediately suspect by Biden's Department of Justice. This dossier is only the latest in a series of steps by the FBI to harass and intimidate conservatives, especially Christians, and in particular Catholics. Think of the report that was released early on in Biden's administration, for example, claiming the greatest threat to America's security is homegrown terrorism, domestic terrorists and extremists, which is shorthand for white Christian nationalists, which is a dog whistle to label anyone with conservative political views, which often includes Christians as enemies of the state. Never mind those balloons flying overhead. Well, certainly in view of the increasing reality that the state under Biden is anti-God and anti-religion and all of that, conservatives, in a sense, are enemies of the state, that state. Remember the school board meetings where conservative parents were labeled as domestic terrorists and Biden Attorney General Merrick Garland had to warn the nation and the stream of arrests and threats of pro-lifers praying outside child killing centers. And now this report trying unsuccessfully to draw a line, a connection between white supremacy, whatever that is, and faithful Catholics. The source used for all of this insanity is the discredited SPLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is nothing more than a fundraising group for liberal hate. It's so bad that internally the FBI has instructed that it is not to be used as a source. Yet there it is right there in the leaked dossier as a primary source. In a remarkable move, within a day or so of the document being leaked and published, the National FBI office quickly disavowed it, saying in part, quote, while our standard practice is not to comment on specific intelligence products, this particular field office product disseminated only within the FBI regarding racially or ethnically motivated violent extremism does not meet the exacting standards of the FBI. You think? But what's curious is, how did this happen? Some person or persons sat in that Richmond field office and felt sufficiently secure in their work to employ disallowed sources, which included leftist press reports, spend a good deal of time drawing together wild hypotheses to arrive at an even wilder hypothesis, and did all of this presumably under the supervision of their boss. It must have gotten enough approval and enough green lights to have been circulated, or as the National Office Statement admits, disseminated only within the FBI. That's troubling. This document, essentially labeling faithful Catholics as what amounts to potential terror threats, didn't stay within the confines of that Richmond office, but it got injected into the lifeblood of the FBI across the nation. This report sat on the FBI's servers for use by FBI agents as a resource when viewing faithful Catholics. It was only when it was leaked and published that all of a sudden it drew scrutiny as it was determined it didn't meet the Bureau's exacting standards. Only then was the document begun to be removed from those FBI systems, which of course begs the question, had it not been leaked in the first place, would it still be sitting there on the servers as a resource? The National Office went on to say, almost with a smirk, considering their actions under Biden aimed at conservatives, quote, the FBI is committed to sound analytic tradecraft and to investigating and preventing acts of violence and other crimes 
while upholding the constitutional rights of all Americans and will never conduct investigative activities or open an investigation based solely on First Amendment protected activity. Pardon us while we laugh. Frankly, as the leaked dossier reveals, that's just not true. Publicly reversing course because you got caught, coupled with two years of SWAT teams, arrests, and speeches by Biden, demonizing anyone who disagrees with him, does not provide a lot of comfort or confidence that this is any more than damage control after getting caught. What person or persons produced that report? Who assigned them the duty? What analysis and review was conducted after it was produced? Who gave the permission for it to be released and circulated throughout the whole agency? Once it was out in the system, how come no one else raised a red flag and said, hey, what's this? The national office is painting this whole thing as some sort of breakdown and eschewing of proper protocols and procedures. But is that really believable? Joe Biden stood on a stage in front of Independence Hall, lit like the fires of hell or a Nuremberg rally, and verbally attacked half of Americans because they hold conservative views. His FBI sends SWAT teams to private homes, raiding families because of their pro-life work. And we're supposed to just believe this report is a mistake of someone not following proper policy? That's just the point. All this looks like it is proper policy and any reasonable person would conclude nothing other than this. Don't expect any of this to go away. It's pretty clear by now what's going on. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.